three quests? The Big Belief Rag. The Big Belief Rag, okay. I was in Minsk, Belarus. Well, who's been in Minsk, Belarus? Somebody, I'm sure. Minsk, Minsk. It sounds like a Popeye word, doesn't it? <laughs> Minsk, Minsk meat. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Uh, is Popeye's chicken cooked in olive oil? I swear I haven't had a cup of coffee yet. If I do, look out. I mean, man, twice as fast. Okay, okay. so this was written uh, written possibly as early. Uh, uh, Ragtime scholars tell me this may have been written as early as 1889. It was, I think, copyrighted in 19, 1899. It is arguably, I think, the most important single piece of American music. Okay. And I wish I'd practiced it more before I got here. Because I did. Okay, I haven't played this song in about six months, so we're going to see the true test of how much I love this song. The reason I think it's the most important is because what music sounded like before the Maple Leaf Rag in America was kind of like. Yeah. It wasn't bad music, but it wasn't American music. It sounded European. Period. Boxy and metronomic, right? Germanic, Scottish. It sounded because at that stage, let's face it, not gonna lie, America was junior. How humiliating! So, what happened? Well, the answer to that, the great American wake-up call, as far as I'm concerned, musically, was this piece of music, which was written by the great Scott Joplin, who was born. Observe this birthday, by the way, the 24th of November, 1868, in Texarkana, Texas. Who's been to Texarkana, Texas? Look at this, what a great group this is, man. I've never been to Texarkana, Texas. Scott Joplin is buried in New York City. He died April 1st of 1917. He's buried, I want to say, you, you, yeah, you can see it from, you can, it, yeah, exactly, St. Michael's, exactly right. And I think he died at the, um, the asylum, and, uh, uh, on one of the islands, like Randall's Island, perhaps? Anyway, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about his good stuff. This is, the 18th, I was in Minsk, Belarus, so that's what I was starting to say. And uh, somebody, uh, I, I was playing this piece of music and somebody said, the make-believe rag. <laughs> Close enough. Here, I'll give it the old college try. College try, or the old collagen try. Maybe I should have done that too. Well, that's coming up. It just turned 60, so there you go. That's, that's coming. 
All right, Maple Leaf Rock. Scott Joplin. That was you know something. That was a song that kind of it, American music just took uh, everything followed that direction essentially. There, I mean, there was still some kind of you know uh, you know. Those kind of songs were, were still written, but they were considered not anywhere near as cool as the ragtime stuff. Because the ragtime stuff was just, it made everybody want to dance. And in fact, it was, I think, I would argue that it was kind of what um, gave America some artistic legitimacy overseas. In other words, even in France, we had people like the venerable Claude W.C., right? That guy? Writing. Anybody have that one in piano lessons? What's the name of that? If you guys know this one, I swear to God. This is the smartest group of people, I swear to God. This is, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. You know, anybody who says that Americans don't know stuff, we know stuff. Like New, York, New York City people know stuff, right? Dolly Wub's Cakewalk. Why on earth was a European composer writing cakewalks? Because ragtime had suddenly put us on the artistic world stage in a more respectable place. You know, it just it just happened because of Scott Joplin. So that's why I think the um, the, the, the oh the guy left okay. No. <laughs> he just want to hear the Maple Leaf rag and he left. Oh sure, oh sure. Just just ask for a request and then leave. Uh, I thought he was giving me a standing ovation, but he just got to leave. Okay, so should I just play whatever comes into my brain or do you got a request? <laughs> 